Do we know what causes this loss of dopamine neurons? Fundamentally, in the vast majority of cases, no. We don't know what the sort of inciting event is uh, in the vast majority of cases. Most people get it later in life, uh, in their 60s or say, uh, or later. Uh, but we have learned from smaller percentages of patients who have a genetic predisposition that there can be a genetic component to this, especially in younger onset cases. Maybe as much as 10% of cases have a more compelling genetic component. And that's something that's been becoming into greater clarity and focus in the last decade or so. Uh, there seem to be no smoking gun risk factors, but there are certain associations. How young does a person have to be to be concerned that they may have a genetic cause of their Parkinson's? So we have this sort of semi-arbitrary line at 40. So when you're under 40, mm -hmm. we call it young onset Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's probably a little bit of maneuver on either side of that. But mm -hmm. uh, the younger you are, the more likely it is that there is a genetic uh, sort of component to it, as opposed to what we call sporadic, which is just perhaps some environmental factors or perhaps environment mixing with some sort of genetic predisposition. These, these dopamine producing cells that we talked about in Substantia nigra, they're, they're very sensitive. They're very high energy sort of producing. And it may be that they're vulnerable through a number of different sort of channels, whether it's mm -hmm. environmental or genetic. And so what we see in, in ultimately in Parkinson's is one diagnosis that may have been gotten to via a variety of routes. Do you recommend genetic testing to your all your Parkinson's patients? I don't. Uh, at this point, you know, and that, the answer may change as we become mm -hmm. more sophisticated both in our understanding of the reasons and also perhaps customizing medication treatments. But at this point, it's still a clinical diagnosis and it's basically treated in a similar fashion. You know, people come sometimes and say, well, my mom or my dad had Parkinson's, should I be tested? And unless there's a very strong history of young onset Parkinson's, right. the likelihood of finding a positive genetic marker is low. And even if we were to find something, a lot of these are not conclusive. You could have a mutation that may predispose you, but you could still easily go all your life without getting Parkinson's. So, you know, that genetics are have selective role at this point, mm -hmm. I would say. Is it safe to say then that uh, unless there is a clear evidence that there is an inherited form of Parkinson's, that the patient is very young or has developed it earlier than 40 years old and there's a family history, then a consulting with a genetic counselor may be a reasonable option in order. Does, that, does it change your management of, of such patients? At, at this point, not really. Um, but it's a conversation to have with a patient. Yeah. I mean, certainly, you know, there are certain people that want to know or family planning purposes or just the knowledge. And mm -hmm. certainly, I would encourage my patients, especially younger onset mm -hmm. ones who are interested in this, to participate in genetic uh, testing for the purposes of clinical trials or better understanding. But as a standard of care, it's still a sort of case by case. And I don't try to certainly yeah. push people into it because I don't certainly. think it makes a big difference in terms of how we're going to manage this patient. Again, I think that may change in mm -hmm. the near future, but right mm -hmm. now um, it, it's still about an individual's symptoms and how they're affecting their quality of right. life.